If you've ever wanted to spice up the look of your game without having to dig into shaders, I've got the add-on for you. You can make effects like these and many more in just a couple of seconds, and whether you want to do it all in editor or all with code or even somewhere in between, it's got you covered. So let's take a look at some of these examples. We'll go through a couple of caveats and then I'll get you on your way, shall we? All right, here we are once again in my little sample playground game. Let's start by quickly going through some of the sample effects I've already built off camera and let's fire this up. So we've got our little earthbound looking dude wandering around and Got this kind of animal well CRT looking effect. Uh, here's our, let's pretend we're bumping into this and taking damage. We can do a, a screen shake effect very easily. Um, we've got a Game Boy palette swap. We've got a different color palette swap. I don't have a name for this one. Uh, and we also have these like nice smooth transitions between day and night effects. Before we jump into the specifics, let me give you 30 seconds on how to get this for free. You come up to your asset library, search for post process, and click download. I'm not gonna do that because I've already installed it, but once you've done that, up to project, project settings, plugins, and then enable post processing. I often forget this step, and then I'm like, where the heck is this? So don't forget to do that. Okay, so now we've got that installed. How do we get it into our game? Well, same as any other node. We're gonna click the plus button, and again, search for post process and add it. It's just that simple. Again, I'm not gonna do that because it's already in my tree. All right, so getting back to those samples that I showed, let me click on post process. And when you first add this, what you're gonna have is this empty configuration file, and you're gonna wanna click on that and create new post processing configuration. That's gonna give you access to all the crazy settings that you can mix and change to your heart's content. I've saved each of the effects that I showed you as a resource, which is a trick we'll get into shortly, but let me load the first one, which was this CRT effect. If we scroll down here and expand this, you'll see this one has a boatload of options and frankly by default and this one in particular i find that a lot of these shaders are like way over the top but if you spend a little time messing with the sliders and trying different values you can get some very palatable no pun intended looks i actually came across this add-on while doing research for an upcoming video that includes another five or six really great add-ons if that interests you now would be a great time to subscribe so you don't miss when that video drops Every time you smash that button, a developer gets its wings. Let's look at the palette swaps because these are a little bit more particular. Grab the Game Boy one. Your results are going to vary with these because effectively you're giving it a palette and then you're letting it match colors as best it can to what's in that palette. Um, this one works fairly well. I will say these work a lot better with games that are pixel perfect. If you apply these to non-pixel art, you're going to get a lot more artifacting than you're seeing here, but these are very simple to create. You literally just turn on the palette and then give it a file with the colors that you want to use. I grabbed mine from low spec. Um, they have a lot of palettes that you can just browse, uh, search and filter options, but you can kind of come through here and I, this one here has got kind of a cool fall vibe to it. So if I click on fiery dreams, and go to downloads, grab the PNG, and we'll save it right into our project. And if I wanted to create a different palette, all I've got to do is find the fiery dreams and replace our color palette. Now we've got this kind of a look. It's really pretty cool, in my opinion. Bear in mind that what I just did saved over my Game Boy palette because I changed the resource that I saved. You see this, let me make this bigger. This is our Game Boy Palette resource. Um, so you wanna be careful about that. I've, I've accidentally overwritten these a couple of times thinking, hey, I'm just kind of playing with the, the options. And then it's like, oh man, I, something looks different than I remember. So just kind of be aware of that while you're playing with this. Anyway, so we're, we'll jump into like how we can create those resources and manipulate these via code at runtime in a second. Um, first, let's just take a look at you know, how you can kind of combine these. So here's a blur filter. I'm gonna pull that up just a little bit so it shows better on YouTube. Um, you know, you could combine that with say um, 
a color correction with like a sort of a red tone. Um, you're gonna have to turn it on. Whoa, a little strong. But that might give you like a, you might flash that for a second to, you know, demonstrate taking damage or whatever. Like this, you can get really pretty complex by combining these, um, which isn't always super helpful in editor, which is why we're gonna look at manipulating them through code. So let's look at this tool script that is in here just for demonstration purposes uh, to see how we can manipulate these via code. So you see, I've got my post process node, which I dragged in. That was already done. That's right here. I got a reference to it. And then within this script, I can access the configuration property of that post processing node to change all of these values in here. Now, there is a little caveat. When you bring this in, Godot is going to recognize it as a canvas layer because it's extending from that, which means unless you do some casting, you're not going to get code completion. You're not going to be able to peek at what those properties are. So if you look here, for example, post process dot, it's not going to suggest configuration for me. It'll work if you reference it, but because it thinks post process is a canvas layer, I'm getting canvas layer completion. So a way around that, if you wanna explore what the settings are without having to dig into the GitHub files, you can do what I'm doing down here, it's a room here, and you can cast the post process configuration property as post process configuration because we know that's what it is. And then when I reference it through that variable, I'm gonna get code completion for all the different properties. So you see aberration, circular waves, et cetera, et cetera. A cheap trick for getting more information on this, if I hold Alt or Command on a Mac, I can click into this and take a look at the actual files and you'll see some of those properties here. So color correction bool, when you see a bool, in a lot of cases, it's, is this effect on or off? And then you can see the data types of the things that you're able to manipulate along with the ranges that they accept. The other way is to take a look at the GitHub page. I will link this in the description. First of all, there's, there's some basic guidelines you can read through where they kind of walk you through some of what we're gonna cover now. Uh, but you can also click into this post-processing section into the, into the node and click on post-process GD. And then you can actually see here are all the parameters available to you. So a couple of ways to peer into what your options are. So going back to that blur example, um, let's, let's steal this first of all. And then in our ready function, we can say CFG dot start typing blur equals true. And then when we run this, we've got our blur. If we want to control the blur strength, we can use our peak cheat again, and then you'll see here is the blur, and then here's our LOD, love only dogs, I don't know, whatever that is. You can see it takes a value from zero to five and then set cfg.lod equals, let's say five. Let's crank it all the way up and play. And now it's crazy, crazy blurry. So being able to drill into those properties, you can combine that with any logic you're looking for and get all kinds of effects at runtime. Here's how I'm handling the shake. This is a super lazy example, but it's actually a good segue into kind of what I'm doing over here with these constants. These are actually references to resources that I saved off camera. Let's look at how to create one of those and then you can see how to apply it here in code. Uh, since we already downloaded this Fiery Dreams palette, let's just create a brand new resource for that. So I'm gonna go up here and collect new post-processing configuration that's gonna wipe everything clean. I'll come down to display where we have palette. Let's toggle it on. I'm gonna get white because I'm not giving it a palette and then we'll drag this in here. And now with this palette swap in place, I'm gonna click this down arrow again, save as, and I've just been using this naming convention, uh, PP for post-processing, dash palette, dash fiery, right? That's just my own sort of anal organization so that when I do quick load, they show up grouped, right? So then back in our script, at this collapse section up here where I'm creating these constants that are just preloaded versions of these resources. So I can 
grab, let's find that resource right here that we just created and drag command or I think control, alt, control probably, click. And that's gonna give us our constant. And then let's see down here where I was swapping in the flashback one, we'll replace it with fiery. And if I fire this up and click palette two, there it is, there's our palette swap. So here where we're swapping out the resource wholesale, in this example, we're making changes to the existing resource. So we're using that trick to get our configuration for the code completion, we're turning color correction on, and then we're setting our initial tint to white uh, because that's the default day state in this particular example. And then we're tweening that tint property to what we've selected for night. And then we're doing the inverse for night. This needs a little bit better logic if you were to put it in a game, again, just for demonstration purposes. Um, I will real quick show you how we get these values. Um, because unfortunately we're looking at floats between zero and one for each of the R, G, B, and alpha values. That's why all one is white. Um, but in the color picker, you're gonna get these as integers between zero and 255. So basically just dividing this number by 255 will give you the value that you want here for each of these. The last thing I wanna show you before we get you on your way is some of you might've noticed that when I apply these filters, it's applying it to everything. And in some cases, that might be what you want. This status bar here being part of the CRT look makes perfect sense. But you'll notice my palette down here isn't being affected by that. I'll show you how to take care of that. Because in some games, let's say like old school Zelda, you've got a HUD up top that you probably don't want affected by, say, a palette swap that you might want for the body, right? So if we look at the documentation, you can see they're applying this on layers 99 through 120, which means you need to place things that you want to take on these effects under layer 99 and anything you don't want affected to be above layer 120. So if we go back into our project, click on our HUD, which contains this bar and expand the layer section and set this to anything above 120 and test our game again, and turn on the CRT effect, now the HUD is above and not subject to the effects of that shader. It's a critical bit, I think, when working with this. This, of course, is not a substitute for learning shaders, but you can get an awful lot out of it with very little effort. So depending on what your needs are, you might be able to achieve them just by playing with some sliders. If you're also still interested in learning about shaders, please consider subscribing. I do have some videos coming up on shaders and one I already did, which I'll link below. We can learn about them together. It's a bit of a blind spot for me and I have no problem admitting that. We all have to start somewhere. I think that's gonna do it for this one. As always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in the next video or one of these. Take care.